Hey Twist and Misters, welcome back to my channel at Twist and Mist. I am going to be showing you how to make this copper pendant that's Viking inspired. If you need more details on each of the steps that I'm going to be showing you, I do have another full tutorial that shows you all the basics on how to get started in this electroforming process. The first step is to foil your object. I've chosen a Howlite gemstone. It's got to be clean, free from oils and residues, and then you have to choose the appropriate width of your copper conductive paint. You also need to burnish it down well so that it does not come apart once you submerge this piece in the copper acid bath. Foiling is by far my favorite part of this entire process. So you should take your time because this part also takes a little while. Don't forget to hit like if you like the content I'm sharing with you, if you find this useful, or if you would like to see other videos like this. You can choose a myriad of objects to create your base. Here I am using polymer clay for creating the antlers. I use the mold and I bake it accordingly to the packaging instructions. And then I put it together with resin and I cure it with an UV light, which is the flashlight you're seeing. You can use anything on your fingertips. I sometimes also harvest things from my garden, like leaves, twigs, just anything that you can put together, cover in conductive paint uh, to electroform can be used to form your pieces. Don't forget to make sure that your joints are strong enough so that when you are suspending it for um, the wire in your electroforming setup, it does not come apart. UV resin is super helpful for me. Other people are use other materials. They'll use glue, they'll use putty mold. Uh, for me, just UV resin is just the easiest because it's super quick. I can get into tiny little spaces and it's so diverse that I can mold it however I need it. You also have to be careful because wherever the resin touches, you're going to need to cover that with conductive paint because the copper will not form over it. So because some of the UV resin got into the foil, I need to make sure that I am covering all the spots. The foil does not have to be painted with conductive paint because the foil is conductive. But since resin got over into some of the areas in the tape, I will have to put conductive paint. Otherwise, the the copper will not form over it. Real quick, we need to talk about jump rings and placement as well as sizing. Jump rings can be used to add more detail to a piece as well as finding a way to put together a pendant so that it hangs from somewhere so whoever buys it or the wearer can put a chain through it. If you use too small of a jump ring you're gonna have a hard time finding a chain that fits through unless you're the one making the chain right so you put the chain through the jump ring and then you will add the clips and the the lobster clasp that goes with it once you put this chain together you won't be able to take that chain out ever unless you undo the whole chain period so this is something to point and to note because whoever buys your pendant, if you're making this for someone else, also as a gift, they won't ever be able to exchange that chain for something that they want unless they actually have the tools to put this together or break it apart. So these jump rings I am using, they're anywhere between five millimeters to three millimeters. I can't remember the size. So they are tiny, super tiny. And whoever is going to be using this pendant is going to get a pendant with a chain that is a whole piece in one. There's going to be no exchanging in this piece whatsoever. If you are using more of a regular simple pendant where it's just one gemstone with a large bail, you may want to opt for like an 8 to 10 millimeter jump ring. This is more useful if you want to exchange the chains where the pendant is hanging from, give it more versatility. So like if the user wants to change an outfit, put a different necklace. So if they want to put a leather cord or a silver chain 
to uh, limit the amount of allergies you are exposed to if you know copper is not great for them bottom line you have to consider the final piece when you are constructing your pendant i am glossing really quickly over the electroforming setup because i talked in detail in my previous tutorial so we're just jumping straight into sanding and polishing i use a myriad of wheels so I will go through the very abrasive and rough wheels to help me fine tune, get rid of any sharp points, get rid of any harsh bumps I have so that the piece look a lot smoother. Then I switch to a lighter wheel to help me smooth out a lot more. Then I'll use this wheel to help me get into like the little corners. And also you have to think about the parts that touched your stone. If you use any of these wheels on your stone, you're going to end up causing scratches and you're going to have a hard time figuring out what to do, how to take out the scratches because there's really nothing once you scratch a stone. You can't just swap it out. I also tried the sanding block, which really helps me give it a final over smooth um i don't like it as much because it leaves a lot of residue so if you can try to invest in a few wheels try them out if you have any questions about them let me know i can also link the wheels i have down below uh but yeah i don't recommend these blocks at all they as you can see they leave a lot of residue and also, I want to point out that you should be using a mask and gloves at all times during this process. There's going to be a lot of copper particles, dust, things that your lungs are just not going to be happy about. I use black max for my oxidation. You can use liver or sulfur, but I do not like dumping my pieces in liver or sulfur when there's gemstones on them. Some gemstones on the most scale will be okay. Um, I personally just don't like it and I like to have the flexibility of painting my oxidation right onto the areas that I want and just sometimes I'll choose to do patina or liver or sulfur or the black max in certain areas and not others. Plus I am able to see quickly the transformation. Um, I don't have to wait. I don't have to warm up the liver or sulfur bath. Uh, so it's just just easy and then I'll use a baking water solution to stop the oxidation transformation I don't like super dark pieces I like a really subtle final rose gold look so what I do is I immediately put in the baking water solution so that it neutralizes and then I wipe off the excess really quickly so it doesn't get too black and once the piece has been wiped off primarily I will go then and wipe it dry so that there's no water in left um, because obviously copper doesn't do well with water and then I followed by with more sanding and more polishing so I purchased these brass brushes and they are amazing not only do they help you uh bring back the rose gold look after you do the black max or if you do liver or sulfur that works too but if you do it in a very fast motion uh you will get a lot of shine i do have the brush brushes on a wheel base as well but sometimes you know trying to set up my wheel it's just it's just annoying so i just do it by hand is really quickly and I just love it um, because it does what it needs to and it's simple and I can just put it back into my drawer. The final part is taking out the liquid latex. It helps me protect the gemstone from all the brushes, the, the baking soda water, and also the polishing. And then that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, don't forget to like and follow if you haven't already.